So um, we have a special devotion, and I am so honored and so blessed to call him up here. Um, we've got some visitors here with him today. Um, I know he's a little nervous, so let's everybody say a prayer for Daniel as he walks up here. He's going to be our devotion today, so let's let's give him some um, a hand clap. Yes, let's give him some. We're really excited. We love you. Good morning, guys. I want to do a devotion this morning on uh, called the power of pain because I feel like that uh, we can all relate to it in some kind of way, physical pain, emotional pain, mental pain, and not only that, but Jesus went through a lot of pain as well. And for that, I want to, I want to read uh, Isaiah 53 just to kind of give a glimpse of uh, what uh, he went through and so verse 1 it says who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed he grew up before he grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root of dry ground he had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him nothing in his appearance that we should desire him he was despised and rejected by mankind a man of suffering and familiar with pain like one from like one from whom people hid their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our, surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions; he was crushed for, our, for our in, iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all. Like sheep have gone astray, each of us turn to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of all of us. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he didn't open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shears is silence is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, yet one of his generations Yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people, he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Through he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet, he was the, yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life, and though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his day, days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life into death and was numbered with the tra transgressions, for he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. So with that, I want to share a little bit of uh, my testimony and... Um, um, painful events that I went through that led me to my salvation. And so, um, let's see. Okay. So, sometimes God delivers you from the fiery furnace, and other times He just makes you fireproof and lets it burn on because He knows you're going to learn something out of this pain. And that it's going to produce power. You've got to 
get a new attitude toward what the power toward what pain can do. It is not authorized to destroy you. It's authorized it's authorized to make you. God is more concerned with our development than he is with our comfort. And here's are some of the events that um, that I went through. Um, childhood for me was uh, living in a home where drugs and alcohol was a part of everyday life, where I never felt uh, any affection or love. I would grow up as a teen, young teenager smoking cigarettes and smoking marijuana. When I was 18, um, me and my buddies, we got in a car accident or drunk, involved a drunk driver and um, he died in my arms um, two weeks after that uh, a cop pulled me and my buddies over and um, shouldn't have let us go he found a lot of stuff on us and but he said I don't know why but he said God for some reason is telling me to let you go and uh, if you don't change he said bad things are going to happen in your life I didn't listen Two weeks after that, I crashed my car. By the age of 20, I was already an alcoholic and using methamphetamines off and on. By 25, I was tired of living, and I wanted to end my life. And I was drinking one day and went home and decided I was ready to do it all, end it all, and I got a rifle and stuck it in my mouth, and uh, couldn't do it. And uh, I was emotional and upset, and I went to go set the gun down, and it went off, and I shot myself in the leg. And I uh, had to sign papers in the hospital, then giving them permission to amputate my leg from the knee down if it was necessary. Uh, at the age of 27, I had already been in and out of jail several times, I had warrants on me. My I was pregnant with my first daughter, Ari, back there, and uh, I refused to be behind bars, so I ran from the probation office and because uh, I wanted to see her born. So I turned myself in. Um, she was like three months old, and I did my time from that, got out, and um, eventually went back to using, and her mom and I split up, and... That pretty much left to, I took it very hard and so my drug use, I used that to self-medicate and it just got a lot worse. Um, by the age of 34, my second daughter's mother and I were living in a tent when we found out she was pregnant and um, was in no shape to try to raise a child. So we uh, made the selfless decision to uh, give her up for adoption. So August the 15th of 2013, one of the hardest things I've ever had to do is watch my baby drive away in a car and then wouldn't get to see her again. Uh, in 2015, um, I took Gwinnett County on a high speed chase on a motorcycle. Ended up getting caught with a lot of drugs and I knew I was going to prison. I thought my life was over, but little did I know it just had begun. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just so happened to my cellmate, um, had been there for almost two years and was really uh, into God and uh, started talking to me about God and said, hey, you know, you ever thought about reading the Bible? Said, no. I don't read no Bible. He's like, oh, I think you should, you know what I mean? And we shared our story with each other, and his, uh, he was different. You know, it was just his uh, calmness, and just, um, I went through, uh, one night, I, we, we were housemen, and we were doing store call one night, and I was standing there doing store call, and all of a sudden, I felt weird, and uh, felt like I was about to die. They rushed me down to medical, my blood pressure was like crazy. I came back and I felt super bad and I was laying on my bunk and he was uh, Hispanic and when I came back I didn't even know he was going to but he just got on his knees and he started praying in Spanish and it was like intense kind of like when you prayed over me like over the phone when I was had my 
spinning and stuff. I felt that over the phone. And he started praying and praying and praying, and like I just felt the presence. And I was like, all right. I said, you know what I mean? I got to get it, you know what I mean? And like I knew I wanted to, uh, I was done with the drugs. I wanted my life to change, and I knew it was time. So then uh, after being there for like 16 months, they sent me to prison with a nine-year sentence. Um, my, uh, my detail officer just so happened to be a preacher, coincidentally. And uh, so I got to ride around in a fuel truck with him. And uh, I used to tell him, hey, uh, bring that anointing oil. And we'd pull over in cow pastures, and he would pray over me. And, and, uh, and it was just, you know, God showed me favor throughout the whole time. Um, I was, I'd never been, like, happy like that, you know. It was the peace that surpassed all understanding. Um, I was coming back from chow call one day, and officer, he, he said, Gibbs, come here. And uh, I said, yes, sir. He said, I got a question. I said, what's that? He said, said uh, he said, um, he said, every time I see you, you have a smile on your face. He said, we go home to our wife and families every day. He's like, you've been in here for a long time. He's like, why are you so happy? I said, one word, and that's Jesus. He goes, oh, and I walked off, you know what I mean? <laughs> He's like, okay, you know what I mean? I said, it's Jesus, you know? And uh, so, yeah, so, so, I mean, you know, my, my detail officer, his wife would, you know, make me leftovers, bring me food, you know, and uh, stuff like that, lunch. And he'd sometimes bring me Wendy's and, you know, and uh, I had my guitar donated. My mom had my guitar donated. I played a uh, guitar in the church band, um, got baptized in the cow trough up there. And, uh, and um, it was really cool. Uh, like, like we had a, like, like I, people just saw, couldn't understand why I was just so happy all the time and I was in prison and it's like, you know, it's, you know. And uh, so with that, um, oh, and, but the one thing I wanted to do is, because I was absent in Ari's life uh, growing up, you know, my drug addiction and stuff like that. And uh, that was one thing that I wanted God to restore. And I wrote her, I wrote her a uh, postcard one day and she immediately wrote back. She was little. And, and it was just like, from that moment, it was like, it was the beginning. And I called her almost every single day, whether it was even for five seconds, just tell her I love her. You know, I may not have money on the phone, but I was like, hey, baby, you know what I mean? I, I love you, you know what I mean? And, and it was just history after that. And, you know, she calls me on the way over here, and she's, like, crying. And I'm like, what's wrong? She's like, no, 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 it's happy tears. She's like, I just want you to know how proud of you I am and, like, how far you've come. And, like, it just, anyway, she just, you know, it's, and, and it's all God. It, it's, 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 I mean, there's no other explanation for it. Um, throughout all that, you know, um, I, surf, uh, I survived a cocaine overdose. Um, it almost took my life. Um, they brought me back in the hospital. Um, I have had alcohol poisoning twice. Uh, overdosed on antidepressants. Uh, depressants, and I've been um, so severely dehydrated from mal being malnourished or whatever. Um, I was hospitalized once for it. I had to call the ambulance. Couldn't even get up and walk because my organs were about to shut down. But God. But God. He was... And, you know, I used to cry out to him because I wanted to change. And I don't know if y'all have ever heard that song, uh, I Can Only Imagine by Mercy Me. Um, I would be under the influence, and I would sing that song, and I'd cry out to him. And, and, and I would just, you know, and, like, I never thought it was going to end. You know what I mean? And, uh, but he had a plan. So with that, you know, he allows us to suffer so that others can see us suffer. This is what I feel like. And... And especially like even in church, you know, Bill, I think about you all the time, like how you're just struggling with the, you know, health stuff and in the hospital and stuff. And we all have our stuff that we're going through. But I believe that God allows us all to suffer. That way other people can see us suffer. And then other people still see you praising and worshiping. And um, yeah, in all things. And, and, then, and, then, and then people see you rise when God brings you through it. You know what I mean? Like, like, like people see you rise from it. And, and like, yeah, I mean, he gets all the glory, you know. And um, 
But like, I, you know, because I just think that he just allows us all to do all that stuff for his glory, you know, for him to manifest. And, uh, and so, yeah, and so, yeah, and so, um, so I got out of prison and um, got me a de- good job and uh, finally found my new church home. And, uh, you know what I mean? And, like, I got a, I got a support group. You know what I mean? My, my family and friends. And um, God is good. And life is just good now. And, um, but, you know, the ones that know me on a more personal level, I mean, I mean they've, I mean, they've seen me struggle with things, you know, rec- you know recently and stuff. But um, my niece, Lindsay, back here, I mean, if it wasn't for her, man, she, she's uh, she is amazing. And I'm very thankful for each and every one of you guys. Yes, and um, she's seen me at my lowest and has just been, you know, like a best friend to me. And, yeah, and so, um, yeah, anyways, I just want to say thank you, all you guys, for all the love that y'all show me. Um, I feel at home here, and, yep, and just, uh, so here's the last thing. See, you have to keep in mind when God calls you to something, he already has considered who you are. God created you, he knit you together in your mother's womb, and he breathed life into you for such a time as this. And there's a part of you that is made in his image that he wants to get through to the world. Um, So if he's called you, he knows that, and he knows exactly who you are, and he knows exactly what you're running from. And, um, but he still meets you wherever you are. And so with that, y'all, I want to close, and uh, I want to say I have a purpose. Each and every one of you have a purpose, and he has a plan. And um, thank y'all for letting me share my story. Yeah.